Okay, today is Tuesday, October 24th, and we've got some Guild Wars 2 news. Uh, there is a new video, new tweet, and new blog post that we are going to go over really quick here. First off, they have added the first major update for Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure and a beta test for expanded weapon proficiencies are just two of the exciting things we've lined up for the community this quarter. Read our studio update for the full scoop. And then there's a link to the update, and there is a link to a YouTube video. So let's go over to the YouTube video, and let's see what is in here. Oh my god, spoilers. Wait, what? Is that it? I'm so confused. Uh oh oh it's oh, oh it's called Launch Story Flashback. Okay. It said previously, and I'm so used to shows saying like previously, and then they show something from last time, and then they show something new. This just okay, this is like a, a re I mean, alright, this is just a flashback thing. Okay. Anywho, so they released that video, uh, and then there is a blog post. Is he, do I have the same thing open in two tabs? I think I do. Okay, so studio update. Guild Wars 2 in autumn and winter 2023. This is the new, uh, the new thingy. Uh, okay, greetings Tyrians. The launch of Guild Wars 2, Soto, has filled the skies of Tyria with sky scales. Halloween is in full swing, and we're back with another update on all things GW2. Going through the veil. The first of three major updates to Soto is coming November 7th. Is that two weeks away, I think? Uh, yeah, two weeks from now. As you may remember the previous update blogs and our expansion announcement, anyone who owns Soto will have full and permanent access to all new expansion content. In Through the Veil, three new story chapters will pick up where the launch story concluded and continue the adventures as you take your first brave steps into a new world. Naos, the Realm of Dreams. If you haven't gotten a chance to play yet, you've got about two weeks to get caught up on the story so far and get ready for the next installment. For folks who've already played the launch story or want a glimpse of it, we've put together a little refresher on some of the key moments that have led to our situation uh, at the start of Through the Veil. Uh, and there's a link to the video that we just watched. In addition to a new, uh, in addition to new story chapters and the opening of the third map, the Cosmic Strike mission challenge mode and the oniro spun armor set will also be released on november 7th in fact to make it simple here's the chart we've shared at launch that shows our plans for each guild or two seto update uh so just really quick the oniro spun armor set i don't know what that is i'm pretty sure that's not the legendary i think the legendary armor is obsidian just to make sure people don't get uh the wrong idea from that uh so november 7th let's see let's just focus on this column here uh story continues uh, the Inner Naos final map is introduced, because, uh, yeah, there'll be three maps. Uh, Instance Comet Cosmic Observatory Challenge Mode, uh, No New Weapons, uh, Inner Naos Masteries added to the game, The Wizard's Vault is going to refresh, Oniro Spawn Armor is added to the game, Additional Expansion Relics added to the game, Convergences with Legendary Enemies, Rift Hunting Map Rotation Completed. Uh, so Rift Hunting is going to get Legendary Enemies added. Uh, Lord Heisen will be soloing that. Uh, let's see. Eagle-eyed observers will notice that the only rule change from last time is we moved up some items. We previously thought we'd need to add a few additional maps to the Rift Hunting rotation with each of the releases, but we were able to include six maps to the rotation with the September 26 build. An additional six will be implemented with Through the Veil completing the Rift Hunting map rotation. Okay. Uh, convergences. Get ready, Rift Hunters. We're excited to take demon hunting to a whole new level with convergences, which are public or squad-based forays into enemy territory. The new story will introduce you to the concept of convergences and it'll unlock the associated Inner Naos Mastery track. Together with fellow Rift Hunters, you'll open up a portal into the home realm of the Cryptus, where you'll need to have your weapons at the ready and your wits about you. There are no waypoints in the hostile territory you'll strike into. It'll take coordination between players to keep yourselves and your allies alive long enough to complete your objective and take out the legendary cryptus lurking in each convergence. Huh. When I, when I just reading that, I'm reminded of Oblivion. Uh, j just really quick, for anyone who never played Oblivion, the, the game before Skyrim, um, you would occasionally have these oblivion portals where, you know, the demons were pouring into your world. And you would go through the portal into their world, 
which looked like hell. And there would always be like a tower or a structure and you would go in there and fight your way to the top and there would be like a core and you'd rip it out and it would uh, eject you and then close the portal. And that's how you got them out of your world. You would close the portals. Um, I, I don't know how similar this is, but just, you know, the read as written, the raw, it sounds very similar to that. So it sounds cool. I like to see it in action. Uh, the public version of Convergences operates on a timer, while squads can open Convergences on demand with unstable Cryptus motivations acquired from Tier 2 and Tier 3 bounties. You can, uh, wait, bounties? Wow, bounties? Relevant, okay. They can also earn an unstable Cryptus motivation each week by participating in a Convergence. Um, and then we've got, we've got a picture here. I'm guessing this is on the spooky side. Kind of neat. Uh, Wizard's Vault Refresh. Each major expansion release comes with a Wizard's Vault refresh. If you're just catching up with Guild Wars 2 Soto, you can find more details on the Wizard's Vault here. Uh, new season... Uh, you know what, hold on. I'm going to open this real quick just to see if this is anything new or just referencing old. Now, this is from August 15th. Okay, we've gone over this before. This is just the Wizard's Vault tutorial. New seasons bring a new series of special objectives to complete for Astral Acclaim. Uh, that's AA or AH for short which will all carry over, and you can then spend that Astral Acclaim on an updated roster of rewards. The upcoming season of the Wizard's Vault features an additional three unique armor pieces to complement the three pieces from the season that's about to end. A new infusion, a weapon set color variant, and more. And the rewards from the inaugural season aren't going away. This release will add a Legacy Rewards tab, where all the exclusive cosmetic rewards from previous seasons will remain available, although at a slightly higher cost due to being out of season. And we got a screenshot here uh, for a few people in some golden and white armor with some um, red and white weapons. Okay. Uh, weapons, skills, and balance. As you already read in the table above, six additional expansion relics will be available starting November 7th. We'll continue to expand the build options available to player through additional relics with the other two updates to follow. Just to pause there for a second, I want to go over to my game. Have they fixed the... Tool tips yet? Um, I don't think so. Uh, no, that one doesn't say the range. Uh, this one doesn't say the duration of the debuff. It doesn't say the range. Okay, no. Um, this is just my own personal feedback on this. I would be much more excited to see fleshed out tool tips for all the existing relics than I would be to see more new ones. More new ones isn't bad. I'm not going to complain about that. But I, what I would really like to see is them finished with these tooltips. Like, all of these, to me, like, if you look at this skill here, this, I've just moused over a random one, this shows the range, it shows the the, the, the radius of it, it shows uh, the duration of the buffs and debuffs associated with it, but on these, it's it's just good luck. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't tell you any, like, give yourself a nearby ally super, nearby, what's nearby, what's the radius? Uh, it doesn't tell you the range of it. And then, you know, when you disable an enemy uh, afflicted by five or more stacks of Confucius Torment, uh, put inflict Confucius Torment on enemies around the target. What is the radius of that? How much Confucian Torment? How many stacks of it? Something like that. Uh, there, there's just, there's so much missing here. There's so much missing here. Like, if they have all that data on a spreadsheet, they just need to copy it into the tooltips at some point. Okay, rant over. Um, let's see. Not too long after the release of Through the Veil, you can look forward to a new skills and balance update on November 28th, one month away. We'll be sharing a preview of those changes, plus the new relics we just mentioned this Friday, October 27th on our Twitch channel. Uh, this Friday, October 27th on their Twitch channel. As always, we appreciate your feedback beforehand, and we'll be watching carefully when the changes ship so we can see how things evolve. Speaking of November 28th, this is also an important day because you will get your first chance to try out a new weapon on your favorite profession. While this Guild Wars 2 Soto feature will launch during our second major expansion update in early 2024, we're giving all players a chance to demo the expanded weapon proficiencies early to test them and provide feedback. Oh, exciting! So that's like uh, how, uh, what was it? I think Necros are getting swords, Guardians getting a gun, uh, Rangers are getting uh, maracas, uh, like all, all kinds of new stuff. That's actually really exciting because uh, we're finally going to get a peek at what these things are going to do. Like, for example, Rangers getting maces. I don't know if that's going to be a support-ish ma mace, kind of like a mechanist, or just a CC mace, like a warrior, or a condition damage mace, like a revenant. I have no idea. I just know if we're getting maracas. So very interested to see what these things are going to do. Um, the special beta event will run from the time our November 28th build goes live around 9 a.m. Pacific 
until 10 p.m. Pacific time on December 3rd. We st uh, will start sharing more information about each new profession's new weapon proficiency shortly after the release of Through the Veil. Uh, World vs. World. We'll have another blog out with more detailed info on World v. World in a few weeks, but here are some highlights for the quarter. In late January 2024, we'll be expanding the ways you can use your Guild Hall to create unique gameplay experiences with a Guild Hall Arena update, including a selector to control which game mode rules your Guild Arena uses. This new feature will give you the ability to set your personal game mode in the Guild Hall, enabling skills and balancing for PvP or World vs. World game mode. That's huge! Okay, so this is something that doesn't affect me, but this is huge for a portion of the player base. All right, so let me explain real quick just so everybody's on the same page here. Um, they For guild versus guild battles, let's say you enjoy 50 versus 50 organized play. And World v. World's a little chaotic because random people can come in and mess with you and stuff like that. Totally fine. That's fair. You know, you got something you like. Uh, what are your options for that? Well, there's going into World v. World and hoping other people don't mess with you. There's like the edge of the mist thing where you can do some stuff there. Uh, there's guild halls, but the problem with guild hall arenas is that in the guild hall, it was for up until now, it's been balanced for PVE. So if you go in there, you know, you might have a skill that was deemed too overpowered, so they cut its damage in half in world v world, but in the guild hall, it still does full damage. So certain things would one shot each other, or the duration of quickness would be tenfold what it should be in world v world, stuff like that. So this update makes it possible for people to do guild v guild battles in a guild hall with the world v world rules um so that is going to be very very exciting for the people uh that like that game mode in addition we'll be introducing options to select teams outside of the confines of the guild arena giving you access to the entire map so you can battle your friends the whole map the whole guild hall can be a world v world arena oh my god that is going to you know m move aside beetle races we're going to have um new battlegrounds People are going to design their own, like, objectives inside a guild hall. That's so... Uh, oh, man, I can't wait to see what people make. Uh, we'll also be running another world restructuring beta in 2024. I don't care. We've got guild halls now. <laughs> As we discussed in our last studio update, the World v. World team has shifted their priority to releasing a live version of the guild-based world restructuring system. Doing this allows us to get consistent live data and feedback from the community to inform our continued development and improvement. Since our last beta, we've addressed a number of issues with guild selection, queue failures, reset issues, and more. In the next beta, we'll be testing the new team builder, UI updates, and bug fixes. Assuming everything goes well with the test, we'll be able to move forward with turning the system on full time. While we don't have dates for the beta or initial release at this time, we will let you know as soon as possible to allow you time to organize your guilds. And then we've got a picture of some foggy rocks. Busiest time of the year. Wait, one, just a sec. Mm. All right, busiest time of the year, except for all the other ones. These, those are the major releases and system updates coming up soon, but there's a little more to cover. November and December will also include more events. A week-long buff to support our extra live stream, November 3rd and 4th. A two-week new Hero Jump start event. A Dungeon Rush week. A Winter's Day, uh, Winter's Day coming up on December 12th. Lunar New Year and a second Skills and Balance update will be coming along near the end of Jan 2024. Around then, or a little later, we'll be back to talk about the next few months of Guild Wars 2. Hi, Benji. Although November through January looks something like this. Soto, story continues, final map introduced, convergences and Interneos mastery, additional expansion relics, wizard vault seasonal refresh, new armor set, cosmic observatory challenge, but we've already talked about all that. Events, Halloween will end November 7th, extra life enhancement live stream, new hero jumpstart, Dungeon Rush, Winter's Day, Lunar New Year 2024. Gameplay system. Skills and balance update, expanded weapon proficiency beta, world restructuring beta, guild hall arena update. Let's see. As a sign-off reminder, we've got two live streams coming up. First, we'd love to have you join us this Friday at noon Pacific time for a preview of the November 28th balance patch. Then come back on November 3rd and 4th for our 24-hour extra life celebration starting at noon Pacific time on Friday and running until noon Saturday. You can learn about our extra live stream here. You can always check our official Guild Wars 2 channel for the latest news and updates. Happy adventuring, and we will see you in game. And for anyone who wants it, I am going to pin this into both of the chats here. And, da -da -da -da. and that is the new news right there. And I'm just going to do that. And hang on a sec.
I'm having a UI issue. Trying to... Hmm. Trying to figure out something. Let me show you guys something silly. I'm trying to figure this out. This is on this is on the YouTube chat. This is my third day streaming on YouTube as well. Uh, I'm trying to click on those three dots for that message so I can pin it. But this little heart thing in the corner of the chat window is in my way. And I can't click on the dots until the chat moves. Blech. There we go. So I, I can do that to move it. And then I could pin the message. But... If those little hearts in the way, I can't click on it. I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah, everyone's spamming move, 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 move. <laughs> All right. Yeah, learning. Yeah, learning. I, I don't really know what the, the point is with the skill issues with the UI. Yeah, I, I don't really know what the point is the little heart thing. In any case, that is it for the news as I have it. There was the, the tweet, the video, and the blog post link. We've gone over all of those. I don't know of anything else at this time. Uh, if you've got any questions, problems, thoughts, concerns, comments, corrections, any of that's welcome, put them in the comments down below. Hey all, Editing Room Mucklick here, and just adding a quick note onto the end of the video. For those interested, I, as many know, I have streamed on Twitch every day for over five years because I have a problem, and Twitch has recently changed their guidelines, allowing us to stream wherever we want. So I am now live on Twitch and YouTube every single day going forward. I stream every single evening after 7 p.m. Eastern Time and every weekday morning. So there's two streams on weekdays and one stream each day on weekends. Uh, I do a lot of Guild Wars 2 as well as a lot of other games. I played 89 different games last year. Uh, so if any of you are interested in hanging out with the community or anything like that on Twitch or YouTube, you can find us here at those times. Okay, for real.